The Northwest Coast. You are there. The entire village is buzzing about the party being planned. The couple giving it is celebrating the completion of their new home. The party will go on for 12 days. At least 200 people will come to enjoy it. Inside the house, you see different kinds of food, wild berries, meat, vegetables cooked in fish oil. Over the next several days, there will be much speech making, as well as singing, dancing, and feasting. The floor is piled high with gifts. Are these housewarming gifts for the hosts? No, they are gifts the hosts will give to their guests. For this party, you don't bring presents. Instead, presents are given to you. Rich resources. The party you just heard about is called a potlatch. Potlatch comes from a Chinook word meaning to give away. The tribes of the Northwest Coast, including the Kwakiutl and the Klingit, gave such parties. The Northwest Coast cultural region had plentiful resources. Its forests contained many tall, sturdy trees. These cedar trees were also rich in game for hunting. The coastal waters and rivers were filled with fish and seals. The people of the Northwest Coast did not have to grow crops for food. They got all they needed from hunting and gathering. With such a wealth of resources, the Kwakiutl and other tribes were able to hold potlatches. The Kwakiutl lived on Vancouver Island and along the Pacific coast of what is now Canada. Displaying wealth and generosity was very important in Kwakiutl culture. Copper shields and stacks of blankets were common gifts. A single guest might be given as many as 20 blankets. The totem pole, a carved post with animals or other images representing a person's ancestors was another way to show wealth. With so much wood available, some Kwakiutl became master wood carvers. People proudly displayed their totem poles, some as tall as a four-story building outside their door. A master carver also used a single cedar log to make a dugout canoe. The Kwakiutl used such canoes to hunt at sea. They hunted not only seals, but also sea otters and even whales. Such prey provided meat for food, furs, for clothing, and for oil lamps used for heating. Customs and Traditions A shaman was an important per person in the Kwakiutl culture. A shaman was a person people came to when they were not feeling well. They believed that the shaman could cure them. Among the Kwakiutl, both men and women could become shamans. Kwakiutl shamans sometimes performed dancing ceremonies. They wore carved special masks. As they danced, they might change their appearance by opening or closing parts of the masks. Special effects often made the dancers more exciting. Hidden performers made wooden birds swoop down on the audience, or they made howling sounds that seemed to rise from the floor. At the end, the dancer might vanish in a puff of smoke. Because food was plentiful, the Kwakiutl had plenty of time to create beautiful objects. Many of them, masks, rattles, serving dishes, were carved from wood and decorated with paint. The objects 
reflected the Kwakiutl's respect for the spirits they felt around them. Thanks to a mild coastal culture, the Kwakiutl could often wear light clothing. Kwakiutl women wove cedar bark into a fabric. Then they made it into skirts for themselves and long shirts for the men. The Kwakiutl also wore clothing made of buckskin, taken from the deer of the forests. In colder weather, they put on animal furs. The forest's cedar trees supplied the Kwakiutl with sturdy housing. Logs provided the upright posts for a house and its roof beams. Planks cut from the logs formed the walls and the roof.